From that side, I look at it, push. Same thing with a stick, right? As opposed to, I hope it hits me. They shoot underhand, overhand, backhand, sidearm. You have to be able to make a different save for every shot. You can't just go on everything. Okay? So let's work on some skills, boys. What you need to learn is how to watch the ball come to you. And you also need to learn how to wait because too many guys are moving and lifting and it goes right through their legs or you, it's there, right? You have to learn how to just watch the ball come to you. Sometimes you do nothing. So this is a great warm-up drill or something you can do with your brother, your sister, your dad, someone in your neighborhood. You don't need equipment. It's going to increase the speed when you do it to whatever you would like to do. But again, you're just watching the ball come to you. Okay? Yeah, and then you're going to hold the ball. Okay. Hold it like about like that. Okay. It's down the net like you're playing goal. Oh, I love this. A little bit more. So you want to... I call that the box. The box. Right? It's the biggest part of your body. You want to put it in front of the ball as much as you can. So now you have a board. So now you're not playing goal and cross, you're just stopping the ball. It's just about you. It's just about you practicing and getting better stopping a ball. And this board forces a couple things. It forces you to hold that position, get stronger, it makes you move laterally. Okay? Because what's happening when you have your legs straight is all you can do is come forward. So when I go this way, I can't go that way. And you want to make saves like that. You want to wait, 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 there it is. There, there it is, right? You don't want to be... Well, here's one down to the crease. Oh! That's not something you can practice. It's not what you want to rely on. It's not how you get better. You get better by doing nothing almost and watching and reacting. And then you'll get better at watching and reacting. So this forces you to watch and react, okay? And usually I play a game with the goalies. So the left, a lefty shooting, I don't want you to get scored on here. Okay, yeah. Make them score a good shot. Okay. And they're going to score between your legs sometimes, so don't worry about it. So just, you're holding tight. Yep. You have no pads on, so you want to keep the board in front of you. And try not to push your arms. Okay. So Use your feet. Show me. my body in yes. the So if it goes to that line. side, show me. Yes. Okay, so always with my whole body. If, if all I do, all practice long, every practice you guys can work on one thing and get better. If you just work on one thing. Maybe you have to tell your coach so your coach knows that you're working on something other than what the, he might want. But, but if I don't let in a goal short side or between my legs, and I make the shooter score here, then I don't have to do any of that. I just stay still. If it hits me, it hits me. If it's going there and I make the right decision, I push and I stop it. But if it goes in, he had to shoot it and make a good shot to score. I didn't lift my stick and go between my legs. I didn't step out too far and have it go short side, okay? So those are goals you can prevent, especially in a practice. And when you get better at stopping everything, you should stop. You don't beat yourself. You don't have a good game and a bad game, and a good game and two bad games. And if, instead, you go and you get a little bit better and a little bit better every practice, every game. And guess what happens? One year, two years, three years, your play goes like this, your confidence kicks in. You feel good, you get better, okay? So that's all I can do is give you guys some drills you can do all the time, not just at the box with your team on your own. If you have a net or you find a tennis court and just put a lace through for the net and the netting or however you make a net. You can do this on your own time and always get better. Tennis balls are the best thing for you because they don't hurt. There's no 
shrinking on the shot. There's no, no oh, I'm not going to put my toe on that. There's no first shot of the practice hits you in the thumb or the toe or the balls or the head and you have a bad practice. You have a good practice every time when you use tennis balls. And it's all about you, the goalie, not the players. And, and the last thing I'll tell you, it's the most important thing for the coaches to hear too. I was a general manager in professional lacrosse for 10 years. And every year at the start of the year, I would have this discussion we're having right now. And my discussion would be, one person on the team is more important than anyone. More important than the coach, more important than the owner. Because he has more control over who wins and loses than anyone on the floor. And that's the goal. So coaches, you have to work out your goalies because they can make a lot of mistakes go away. And a lot of coaches don't think like goalies because they weren't goalies. It's not their fault. But you get what I'm getting at? You're your own boss. You've got to make yourself better. You've got to think about all these little things I'm trying to show you because like I said, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then you get better. And the confidence is the big piece because what happens with goalies who go like this, the sooner or later the down part is further and the confidence never kicks in and you never get to where you want to go because you wouldn't be standing here if you didn't want to be at the next level. We talk about stance in the net and again when you're holding your stick this high my knees are, are almost dead straight and if I can bring my stick down and out it's very important out here so again to do this you have to get good at doing this how I get tired and as I got tired I would get wider and wider and then they would shoot the net so I want you guys to just for the rest of tonight, try and at least try what I'm about to show you. And that is you want to get your stick away from here, out here. Okay, and so part of the reason you're having trouble with this is because your hands are like, like this. Your thumb is, is up instead of, well your thumb, your hand is like this, sorry, from coming around. So you can't move your stick very well. You have to turn your hand like that to pick a ball up. So in the old days with the short stick, we would play sometimes with our thumb right in the head of the wooden stick. So when you hold your stick with your thumb up, you can get hit, but you can move and catch a ball, control it, take it and roll it. No rebound, right? So. Again, think about the, the drill, just passing with the tennis ball with the player stick. You watch it into your stick, you learn how to catch a ball, track a ball, roll the ball in your stick, keep the spin in your stick. Gene Ash. So, it's a skill. And I'll tell you, before all the equipment, this was the best equipment. It didn't hurt <laughs> to get hit with a ball because it was in your stick. So now, this is how we're playing goal. Okay, and it works to some degree, but I think it's hard to get better if you don't try and at least get your stick out and start moving it to a shot. And it won't happen with your hand up here. So if you guys are comfortable, just try a little bit, even if it's just a couple inches and a couple inches. It gets the weight off of your stick and it gets it into your back and it stops you from exploding forward <coughs> as soon as they shoot. It's a squat, it makes the back stronger, it makes you be able to stay in this position and have weight on your stick. Um, but balance, it's no different than the, the checkers checking and the guys on their back, you know, pulling in and shooting. The cross is all about balance. The same thing with goalies. If you're off balance, all you can do is come forward. But if you're balanced on your heels, you can you can move to anything, right? So um, you have to be careful, and part of the stair work will get you better at staying in this position. So you're not making these saves where my shoulders are outside of my knees. You want to make this save. 
you don't need to stop the ball up here. You need to stop the ball here. Remember? The board. So that's why I've been working with you guys to try and get you back in the net. Because as soon as I step out, you put it over me, you can pass around me, you can reach around me, and you see all that net. When I'm here, it's hard to get it over me, it's hard to get it short side, and I see the reach and I can meet it here, not here. And I hope, right? And then again, if I fall to my knees, I'm out here. Now I've got to get back there. When I fall to my knees here, I'm still the box taking up half, three quarters of the net. So that's why I would tell you guys to try and practice being back here as much as possible. So again, when you're getting this kind of save, you really are, it's a byproduct of having your feet locked out. You're trying to generate lateral movement with your arms and no legs. So again, it could be that. It doesn't look as good, but it stops a lot more. I don't, and I'm doing a little squat. So you're building these muscles up. Because when you play goal, you stand like that. It will make your, your whole structure stronger so you don't get tired during the game. Uh, what happened? Sorry. Let's take two more steps. <laughs> I can't move. I'm done. He's got an empty net. But if you come, if I don't come up with his stick, I go across. They slide the board, okay? Shooting high, you see it, and he's shooting low. You've made him probably hold the ball longer than he wanted to and shoot a shot he didn't want to, but you'll see it more because he's really only got this side to go to. Even if he tries to go back that way, when you leave later, he usually hits you. Whereas if you leave right away, and that's what they want you to do. So it's hard to practice staying down when they come up, but I just wanted to mention it, so Next time you're in a practice and you go, ah, oh, that's what that guy said. Okay? Um, you have to wait, right? 30 seconds on the clock. Ball comes into their end. They wait. They wait. You never know when the shot comes, right? And then in practice, the shot comes, 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 right? Or a breakaway pass. Breakaway pass. Everything is in time in practice. In a game, never in time so they actually practice getting worse mentally okay so i'm putting in a few drills for you guys to run and practice so and a general rule of thumb is to start practice the closer you are to the goalie less travel less chance of injury so start tight move up so straight across the shoot go go Okay, lefties. <laughs> this drill we call it walk the dog. And literally, players, you start with your hand out. So, again, it's for the goalies. You have to wait. You have to wait for them to shoot. So, you literally start running, you pull it. And he has to do something more than just set up and be big. He has to watch you pull the stick with your feet moving and shoot the ball. Nice. <laughs> Run three quarter speed because the goalies need to practice at three quarter speed or more. Because in a game, in a game, when they're running and the guy's on their back chasing them, they might be trying to shield the ball, but 
they're running full speed and then shooting almost as an afterthought if they're being chased. But nobody practices half speed, or nobody runs a breakaway half speed or a quarter speed. But we get lazy with practice and we go this fast. You watch how many picks I can throw. There. As opposed to running full speed, not even throw one. So keep that in mind because that's again. Shooters making goalies worse by practicing out of time and not game speed or game situation. So, in this drill, all I'm doing, you take off, go. I'm looping him the pass. So, two things are going on here. He's running really fast and the pass is real slow. So, as the goalies, you have to sit and wait and wait. But what you don't want to do is get all wound up in the guy running really fast, slow pass. You have to wait for him to catch before you can even, before he can even turn his head. You have to just wait. Okay, so it's a great drill for practice for goalies. Nice save. Nice, nice push. <laughs> Yep. Nice, good job. Here we go. problem with the balance is how you hold your hands. So there's lots of guys who do this, do this. I would ask you to at least try to use your thumb, dig it into the top of your pants and have your weight, again, balanced. Because now I can push. If I want to push that way, I push here and drive that push. And also look what happens when that ball goes to the net there. That's a hard thing to stop. This is even harder to stop. But this, the ball's here, it's here, if it's there, it's there, if it's there, it's there, it's the same shape. So you can meet the ball everywhere, okay? So just try it, just try it, where? And you stay back and they have a hard time scoring on you. But you, you, you're twisting a little bit, when you don't, you don't need to, you just stay still. It's actually easier to play goal when you're shorter than when you're taller. Because <laughs> with the guys who have long legs, they got huge five holes. So they got to go to their knees. And now they're four foot six instead of six foot four. So it's a, it's a great thing to not be over six feet tall. You need to learn how to kill the pressure as a goalie. So that means you need to learn how to breathe. Remember, breathe. Simple. Try and do it. Very hard to remember, okay? So always remember to breathe. And the best goalie that I think ever played lacrosse is a guy named Dallas Elliott. And he used to write breathe on his stick right here. Because even he would forget. But he would remember when he looked down at his stick. 